uh, welcome to this tech talk on how to increase the efficiency of the analysis and design of wind turbine platforms uh, using Bentley's analytical cloud services. Although the title for this tech talk mentions fatigue, the process is applicable to all analysis types. Let me just, uh, Okay, so this is a typical workflow for an uncoupled analysis of a offshore wind turbine platform. After the conceptual design phase, the process starts with the platform designer generating a dynamic super element of the support plat platform, which is then passed on to the turbine manufacturer. The turbine manufacturer uses the dynamic super element as a dynamic representation of the platform in conjunction with their own in-house aeroelastic program to conduct a, a full-time history analysis for design load, all, all the design load cases. The interface time history loads are at the base of the tower are then passed back to the platform designer uh, to be used in conjunction with wave and wind loads generated by SACS for a dynamic time history analysis of the platform. Uh, a redesign of the platform is then performed and the whole cycle begins again. The aim of the current developments in SACS is to substantially increase the efficiency of this process for the platform designer and as a result for the whole cycle. First, let's look at an overview of the problem. Uh, a typical fatigue design of a wind turbine platform can involve anywhere between 5,000 to 10,000 uh, dynamic force time history analysis. Uh, strength design can in involve up to 10 to 15,000 dynamic uh, time history analysis. Typically, each time history is about 600 seconds long after the initialization of the transient. The analysis time incre increment can be anywhere between 0 0.05 seconds to 0 0.001 seconds. Sorry, 0 0.01 seconds, that should be. So typically, 12,000 to 60,000 load cases need to be solved per simulation. Since each time history is independent, the dynamic time history analysis is perfectly suited for parallel processing. However, the whole process is still very time consuming. The generation of the input files and the directory structure for thousands of dynamic time history load cases, plus the quality assurance of the input data can take up to a week, if not more. The analysis of thousands of dynamic time histories of uh, load conditions using in-house resources can take anywhere between three to four weeks. So what's Bentley's solution? Well, for data generation, uh, we have a new SACS wind turbine job creator. Uh, this can automatically generate the input files and the directory structure for thousands of dy dynamic time history load cases for uh, any analysis type in minutes. For the actual analysis, uh, Bentley is now offering an analytical cloud service which provides the availability of thousands of nodes for parallel processing and which can reduce the analysis time from weeks down to hours. So let's first look at the new SACS uh, wind turbine job creator. Uh, the job creator uses a spreadsheet which contains the input data for all design load cases. Uh, the Excel spreadsheet is used to uh, populate the parameters on the input lines of the base set of files provided by the user to create an input, uh, create the input for all time history load cases. And as such, all input lines needed for the analysis must already exist in the base set of files. The job creator does not introduce new input lines, but only updates existing lines based upon the data provided in the Excel spreadsheet. Here is a typical spreadsheet containing the analysis input data uh, for, in this case, about a thousand load cases. The job creator uses the header row to identify the data columns in the spreadsheet. 
The job creator also uses a configuration file to define the data on input lines for various time history load cases. The file contains here, in this case, contains the data input for SAC's wave response and C state module. A data label defining the data, its input and field uh, and type of data is uh, basically what, uh, what is needed in this file. The wave response and C state data can be contained in separate configuration files or all contained in the same uh, file as shown here. The job creator can automatically generate all design load cases needed for an ultimate strength analysis or a fatigue limit state design. In addition, uh, it can also generate the input needed for a dynamic super element. The header line row input, as shown here, is used to read the header titles in the Excel spreadsheet as a cross-reference to the data contained in the columns. This data is subsequently used to generate the input files needed for the time history load cases. The parameters on the input lines for the various time history load cases are defined by associating the labels on the input lines in the configuration file to those on the header line in the Excel spreadsheet. Once all the input has been defined, uh, the input uh, for all dynamic time history load cases is generated by simply clicking on the Generate Files button. As shown here, for each design load case, which is all mentioned as a DLC, the analysis directories are generated by wind direction. In this case, our design load cases are defined by the IEC code as 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, .1 etc. The wind directions are defined by the 0, 30, 60, 90 degree directories you can see here. The simulations for different wind speeds are defined by the identifiers in the Excel spreadsheet, in other words, A00, A01, and so forth. Note all the files contained uh, in each folder comprise a fully self-contained analysis. Once the input has been generated, Bentley's analytical cloud services can then be used to conduct the parallel processing of the thousands of time history analysis uh, using thousands of nodes available on the cloud. The setup of the run is exactly the same as that for a SAX wind turbine process for an uncoupled analysis on a desktop machine, so it's not very complicated to use. To set up the run, the user can select the analysis type as wind turbine and the subtype as SAX wind turbine cloud process. The user is then prompted for a control file and a partial fatigue input file. Then to start the run, uh, simply click on the Run Analysis button, and that would set off your run on the cloud. Note, the cloud environment needs to be set in the SACS exec executive prior to using this feature. After the cloud job is finished, uh, a log file is produced indicating number of su successful and, and unsuccessful time history analysis in addition to the elapsed time and the total computation time. Under some circumstances, some job runs or some jobs may fail to run due to some reason and the cloud job will fail to complete. The user can correct the issues causing the failure and then resubmit the run by right-clicking on the run file and selecting the option to rerun the failed tasks. This, are, this also gives the users to connect to a job already submitted on the cloud to check its status. Okay, so next we have a little demo video here which shows uh, the functionality I just described.
As mentioned before, the job creator requires a base set of files to generate the files and directory structure for all design load cases, including the run file itself. Basically, this includes all files needed for a successful wave response run. An Excel spreadsheet should also be provided. The spreadsheet contains input data for all dy dynamic time history simulations for all design load cases required for the complete analysis. In this case, we have some, I think it's about 1,000 uh, load cases. And for design uh, load conditions. A configuration file defining the parameters on the input lines needed for wave response and C state modules together with their input fields on the input lines is also required. The wave response and C state parameters as I mentioned before, can be defined in separate configuration files or in the same file as shown here. This part of the demo next shows the functionality of the wind turbine job creator. We invoke the job creator, and as said before, we are able to generate files for strength, analysis, fatigue, and the generation of dynamic super elements. In this case, we'll choose fatigue, and then we input. Uh, we begin by selecting the types of analysis, uh, and the next step is to start defining the analysis paths for the various uh, files needed for the gen generation of the time history analysis. You can after after you've defined the files, you can then select files that are needed to be copied to each directory that's generated, and these could be files that do not change between one simulation and another, such as the model file and the dynamic super, uh, sorry, the foundation super element file as shown here. We next provide the Excel spreadsheet and the row number in the spreadsheet that contains your header row. The header titles. So once the Excel file has been read, we can then associate each field being displayed with the column of data in the spreadsheet. This enables the correct data to be inserted into the necessary files that have been generated. For a modal analysis, we can select between wind direction based or non wind direction based. Uh, the non, the, in this case, we'll choose the non direction based option and then supply the mass and mode files. The next step is to select the design load cases to be analyzed. Uh, the null load here is a discrepancy. After defining the, the design load cases, we can assign the field headers uh, on the input lines for wave response and C state, which are to be updated for all design load cases. To do this, we simply match the input labels defined in the configuration file to those in the Excel spreadsheet. So the relevant rows or columns of data are assigned to the correct input, input parameters. So once the header types have been assigned to the input fields, we can then generate the input files and folders uh, simply uh, by clicking on the Generate File button that you see below there. And within a matter of minutes, you can generate thousands of, how do you say, uh, directories or simulation uh, input files.
the files are generated for each design load case. You can see here 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and if you open them up, they are arranged by the wind direction and then by wind speed under the wind directions. A control file stacks in, which basically controls your parallel processing, is also automatically generated. Okay, so now we've generated all the files. How do we update, uh, upload them to the cloud and run them in parallel? Well, for a fatigue analysis, the, uh, to begin with, the user also needs to provide a partial fatigue input file. And, and basically, this what this file contains are the main parameters, such as the design life, the safety factors, the choice of SN curves, and the SCFs. To start the analysis, simply go to the analysis type and select wind turbine, and the subtype is selected as the wind turbine cloud process. As mentioned before, this is exactly the same as running the wind turbine cloud, uh, cloud application on a desktop. The user simply provides the Saxon file and also the partial fatigue input file. And then to begin the analysis, simply click on Run Analysis. This is speeded up a little bit. Uh, in this case, I had about 10 jobs that were running on the cloud. After the jobs are finished, you're prompted uh, whether you want to download all uh, result files for all uh, the simulations, and we'll say yes, and then you'll see all the list files and the result files being downloaded. At the end, this is the list, uh, the fatigue file or the fatigue damage file that's been generated, and you can see some damage and service life numbers being generated here. As I said before, this is only using 10 files. If you go to the cloud uh, folder, which is also generated, uh, there is a Bentley cloud log file there. And again, this contains uh, a status on whether you have successful runs or unsuccessful runs. And also the your to total uh, elapse time and uh, computation time. OK, so these are some examples here. Uh, the first one is for a dynamic super element generation. In this case, we had 1,566. Simulations. Uh, each simulation ran between one to one point uh, one hour fifteen minutes. Uh, the total job computation on a single processor would be in this case somewhere around seventy five days. However, the total lapse job time on one thousand nodes in the cloud uh, is only two point four uh, eight hours. This is uh, fatigue. Uh, simulation that we ran. In this case, we ran 2,376 simulations. Uh, the simulation time for each one each was around one to one and a half hours. And again, if you take the average of that, the total computation time on a single processor would be 124 days. And in this case, using a thousand nodes on the cloud, uh, the job was completed in 4.27 hours. OK, so that basically brings me to the end of the presentation. And I want to thank everybody for uh, attending. And I want to hand it back to Ellie. Jeff, did you see any questions from our audience that we might want to address real quick? Yeah, I think the uh, the first question was kind of addressed by a couple of those last slides, but uh, the first question I got was, what sort of time savings can be achieved using the cloud environment? Uh, 
Well, it, it could be substantial, as you saw here. Uh, it, it all depends on the number of nodes that you access, and and basically the the process is designed to save substantial time to speed up the right. whole design And then design the second cycle, question I, I got before. was, uh, is my data secure on the cloud? Well, we all put data on the cloud every day when you have pictures on your cell phone and so forth. The data on the cloud is very secure, so I, I, there is no worry. There's no need to worry uh, about that. Here's another one. What happens if some runs fail to complete? Okay, as I showed before, you have the option uh, to correct those runs and then go back and just rerun those ones that have failed. And once you've done that, then for fatigue, it'll actually go back and, okay, and accumulate the how long can I store months. my files on the cloud? There is no limit. Uh, you can store them as long as you need them. Uh, so really, there is no limit on that. Of course, there is an expense associated with it, but I believe the storage expense associated okay, with storage Okay, those are all the questions I have so far.